The Investing Mindset Do you want to be rich or poor? When it comes to financial wealth, one of the most common misconceptions is that the term rich can only be used for those with millions of dollars in their bank accounts. But the reality is that this statement could not be farther from the truth. Why don't you try doing this? If you ask four different individuals to define wealth, you will get four different meanings. If you want to become rich, you must embrace the mentality of those who are already wealthy. Figure out how much money you intend to have within the next year as your first step in achieving your financial goals. So, what do you see in exactly three to five years? Do you already have a number in mind? Great. So, if you would like to see even a single dime of that wealth, you're going to need to develop a rich mindset. Hi, I hope you enjoyed my previous video and are happy to be back. Welcome back. Or if you're just joining us, we're Finance Bureau, your one-stop destination for all things cryptocurrency and finance. I'm happy you can make it. For this video, I will talk about developing an investing mindset. At the end of this video, let me know which mindset you are going for. The human tendency for wealth is unmatched to any other motivation. Whether it be the pursuit of material pleasures, the achievement of self-sufficiency, financial independence, or the fulfillment of the leisure that comes with having large sums of money. The path to financial success is rocky and plagued with misconceptions. With that being said, let's get right to it, shall we? Most people's mentality is rooted in achieving either wealth or remaining poor. Your starting point in life is determined by chance. But your ultimate destination is determined mainly by the ideas, beliefs, and attitudes you cultivate throughout your life. I hate to break it to you, but your actions and decisions are solely the reason for your current situation, whether good or bad. Your relationships, wealth, and the foundation of most of your actions depend on how you think about those things. Most people think that the real gangsters are on Wall Street or are working for the government. Because of what we have been taught and seen, we always associate money with evil. We think some people are rich because they have done something sinister to get there. Some of us probably believe that in order to get that rich, we need to backstab someone or drag others down. It sends the message to others, I have to engage in some immoral behavior if I want to get rich. Then we judge others by saying, those people who have a wealthy amount of money in their bank accounts probably did something wicked to get there. This kind of mindset is very harmful and counterproductive. Having a poor mindset teaches you to resent those who are wealthy and successful, and that everyone who is rich is probably a con artist, right? Because having this poor mindset teaches you to envy those who are at the top. However, is there any use in dragging others down? Ask yourself, will it really make you happier or wealthier? If your answer is no, then we need to get rid of that toxic mentality. Since being envious of other people and always comparing ourselves to them will stop us from progressing. Another thing is that most of us earn just enough money to cover our expenses. And once we are sick of paying our expenses and feel miserable, we say to ourselves, you know what, I need to treat myself to something. They probably think, I don't care if I have to go into debt or if it goes beyond what I can afford. I need to buy something nice to keep my mind off this misery. You decide to reward yourself with something that is beyond what you can afford at the moment, but it makes you feel good right now, and since it makes you feel good, you get addicted to that feeling and continue to do it again and again. You say that if you know what I'm experiencing, what I'm doing is a relief from the daily struggles. But what if everyone shares the same struggles? What if no one comes up with a solution and just keeps doing the same thing over again? And if one doesn't change anything, we will all just end up like everyone else. Don't get me wrong, we all deserve something nice once in a while. 
but I want you to think it thoroughly. Do you want short-lived happiness or long-term financial gains? What do you think? There are many people who are born into poor circumstances who go on to achieve great fortune. And there are many people who are born into wealthy situations who go on to waste their resources and end up where they were before, poor. Your frame of mind may take you in a different direction regardless of where you are in life. A person might be surrounded by endless possibilities yet still have a poor mentality even though they have those advantages. Regardless of the external situations, the main symptoms of a bad mental attitude include being envious, being negative, and having a narrow worldview. Tom Bilyeu, a Wall Street trapper, once said, If I'm going to make a change, I need to make the hard choices. It's difficult for people to make sacrifices because you must now go against the things that give you instant satisfaction and live without them. Ah, that's what keeps you alive. That's what keeps you going. You simply need to go on vacation or buy this pair of shoes that may cost you a thousand dollars and you know you can't afford them, but you keep saying to yourself, I've worked so hard. I need that just to keep giving me something to look forward to. However, you should be aware that any income that is made should be turned into capital in order to be used for investing or trading in assets. That same Wall Street trapper who is a successful investor said that what you can do to stand out is to gain information. So let's equip ourselves with knowledge that some people don't have. So how do the rich do it? In order to accumulate much wealth, the rich often invest first in stocks, then in businesses, and finally in real estate. Stock ownership is similar to being a shareholder in a profitable company. For starters, you are not getting where you want to be, becoming wealthy, because you do not own any assets to safeguard your money. You only have your money lying around in cash. In the most realistic sense, the key to wealth is ownership, not simply having the money sit in a bank account and doing nothing. The attention of those who are rich is on growth, while that of those who are poor is on the potential for financial loss or risk. When you deposit your money with a bank, you are not contributing to this growth in any way. It's possible that inflation is eating away at it at a pace of 2% to 4% per year. Therefore, if your bank is offering you an interest rate of 1% per year, you're also experiencing a loss of value of your money at a rate of 1% per year. It's either having their money lying around in a bank or they own depreciating assets, which is what money is. Cash is a depreciating asset since the more money is printed, the more value that money loses. The reason the bank wants you to keep your money there is so that they can take it, use it, and invest it so much, and then turn around and say, hey, it's just sitting here. I'm going to give you 50 cents on whatever you had in it. Therefore, the concept of ownership is that you can simply start owning anything regardless of whether it is just a stock. Now that's powerful because if you can begin holding a share of the companies you currently use daily, you have the power to transform a one-time purchase into a lifetime of profit. Your attention should be directed on purchasing assets that provide positive cash flow rather than purchasing consumer goods, which are assets that decrease in value over time. It is a one-time transaction if I go to the shop, purchase a pair of Nikes, and then leave with them. In order to finally acquire anything from them again, I had to go back and buy another pair of Nikes. However, if I own the Nike stock, then for as long as I own it, it will be a profitable avenue for me. Because of this, a single transaction can potentially turn into a lifetime of profit if I own that business. If I'm going to buy an Apple product, if I already use Apple products like I already have the iPhone, the AirPods, the MacBook, and the PC, I get excited when Apple is about to release a new product. And there's really no reason why I shouldn't try to own as much Apple stocks as I possibly can. What makes a wealthy mindset different is that it is focused on producing, constructing, and multiplying its wealth. 
The vast majority of millionaires either have their very own company, which they started on their own or with other people, or they have a significant income that they routinely invest in assets, such as real estate or stock portfolios. Millionaires generate more wealth than they use up, and their passion for their profession transcends their pleasure of leisure pursuits and other material possessions. Their occupation is also their hobby. Their primary pastime may consist of accumulating wealth by managing their own finances, investment portfolio, property holdings, company or cash flow and resources. Many things may go well and many things can go wrong when considering whether to save or invest money. Individuals often make illogical decisions when it comes to their financial resources. You have a responsibility to yourself to uncover alternative paths when the ones you've been taking haven't been producing your desired financial results. And a better way may exist, even if it's not the most popular. Instead of spending most of your time consuming products, you should focus on generating value for other people. You must maintain a mindset that accompanies the growth of wealth and the management of one's finances. Having a wealthy mindset is to be well aware that to maximize one's income, one must first increase one's abilities and worth. One must put the extra time and effort into expanding their worth to their employer, customers, and the community. One must also put time into developing their skills. Not believing income is static and that the only way to raise it is to work more hours. We know otherwise. The stock market supports the first steps towards understanding how the world functions. It's not about how powerful you are. It's about what you can learn and how you can actively use it. I know it sounds cliche, but knowledge is power. Knowledge gives us leverage in life. It's not about how strong you are in every situation you are faced with. Some people are afraid of success because it brings so many responsibilities, right? But unless you can conquer the current reality that you're living in, you won't be able to go forward. Once you have established a level of comfort in a particular environment, that environment will seem ordinary to you. Anyone can live a mediocre life. Everyone can live in mediocrity, right? There are those people who are fine living in fear and what-ifs. Then there are the misfits, people who never stop trying to better themselves and go to the next level. Which one are you? Let me know in the comments. Here's the thing. If you believe in yourself and what you're capable of doing, the human mind and body will go as far as you think they can. You are absolutely right when you say that the only belief that counts is what you think you can do. There's nothing you and I can't do. It's all about having an impact while also achieving goals and feeling fulfilled. You will feel like the money is just an unintentional byproduct of everything else once you focus on improving yourself. You should not be afraid to face challenges front on. In contrast to a poor mindset, one would prefer to remain in their comfort zone. Having a wealthy mindset means being aware that there will be obstacles to overcome along the way to get where you want to go. And as a result, you are prepared to meet these obstacles head on. Because if you don't want to go out of your comfort zones, you tend to remain in the same position and maintain the same lifestyle year after year, right up to the point when you retire from the same place where you began. A wealthy mindset often reflects on the long-term implications of their decisions. You don't let yourself get caught up in the present. You need to have clear goals and clearly see yourself in 3, 5, or even 10 years from now. Do you live in the now? Or can you imagine yourself in the future, say, 10 years from now? Just to be clear, this video is just a handbook. You have the potential to either be wealthy or poor. You may end up sharing characteristics with both the wealthy and poor. To tell you the truth, it is not a problem. What you need to do is make an assessment of your current situation and choose how you want to go. In what way would you characterize your mindset? Do you want to invest your money so that it can work for you? Or do you want to work for money? You are responsible for it, 
nobody will worry about your financial situation as much as you do at the end of the day. Developing an investment mindset is the only best way to release yourself from trading your time for money. Now, if you want to know more about investing, I have another video just for you. It is about when is the best time to invest. Feel free to check it out on my channel. Here in Finance Bureau, we are a big believer that one should be the change one wants to see in the world. It's never too late to start making changes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more financial content and advice. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again real soon.